approach, how we really see the lane and what bowling balls we use on certain patterns really has a lot to do with how we see the lane, isn't it? Yeah, that, that brings up a great point, Carolyn. And overall, we, do a, we deal with a lot of people coming in here for a lesson and coming in, into the pro shop for a new bowling ball. And they'll say, you know, Coach Brian, I want, a, I want a stronger ball. I want a stronger ball. And I really have to take a step back and really look at what do they mean by that. Because a lot of people, what a stronger ball is, is completely different to what other people. So there, there's almost like a, you know, a, a misnomer out there about what a truly a strong bowling ball is versus a weaker bowling ball. So what I brought here is something that we use for camps all the time. And, and it's a scale of what an actual lane is front to back versus side to side. So you can see how much longer the lane is front to back versus just how sort of short it is side to side. So in terms of ball strength or bowling ball strength in terms of how strong a ball is or how weak it is, too many people just worry about what it's doing side to side. So when people come in and say, well, I want a strong ball that really flips on the back end. You know, what they're talking about is the movement that the ball is going to make left to right or right to left, either or for a right hander or a left hander. But how we at Team USA and here in the training center deal with stronger versus weaker, we look at it when it's starting to hook. So reading it more front to back. So a stronger ball is going to want to start more in the earlier part of the lane and not really save all of its energy for down here in the pins, where a weaker ball is going to be cleaner and, smooth, and cleaner and with less change of direction early and then change directions harder down lane. So I think that's a really big misconception that we have to try and you know, get everybody on the same page. And that brings up a really great point. In, in the scale, explain a little bit how important this middle part of the lane is with today's lane patterns and ball motion. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Something that we talk about is that you need to control the hook phase, which is basically where the mid lane of the, where that's going to really happen. And you need to control the hook phase in order to achieve the roll phase on the back part of the lane. And we'll get into the roll phase a little bit more detail a little later, but the hook phase is really the most important part. We need to make sure that starts early enough and strong enough so that we get the ball into the roll phase down here in the back end. All right, so let's take a look at the difference between stronger bowling balls and weaker bowling balls and actually how they can read the lane front to back. So here we have Steven throwing ball number one, and you can see this ball takes a pretty direct line straight out almost to the gutter and then makes a hard turn from right to left back to the pocket. This ball covered more boards from right to left, but yet it was saving all of its energy just for the last 15 or 20 feet or so. So technically, this would be a weaker type bowling ball. Here we have Steven throwing ball number two, and you can see this ball has more shape to it throughout the whole lane. It's actually using most, much of its energy much earlier, and therefore it's not saving as much energy, energy for the back end and hooking throughout the whole lane. That's what would technically make this a stronger ball. Brian, it's amazing that, that people do react to the fact of when they see that ball and make that motion to the pocket, they think their ball is stronger, but wow, that mid lane and that earlier roll really do make a difference. Yeah, that's right, Carolyn. I can't reiterate it enough that the better players in this world all read the lane front to back. And unfortunately, a lot of the intermediate players and even advanced players, but not quite at that elite level, they see that ball make a big motion or a big change of direction from right to left or left to right, depending. And they really equate that to overall ball strength. Where we want to equate overall ball strength is to how early it is, whether it's reading the lane on the front part of the lane or the middle part of the lane, or whether it's saving all that energy to the back part of the lane. And this is a great subject too, if, especially if you have a coach to really discuss with them how, have the coach explain to them how they're seeing the lane because a lot of times, especially as I was even advancing as a bowler, the coach would try to talk to me about reading the lane and I did see it for the longest time right to left. I, I did for many years. And learning to read it from front to back, it takes a little bit, a little bit of patience and really watching your ball reaction as it's going down the lane to really learn how to see it. Yeah, it's definitely a learned skill. It's not something that somebody's just going to pick up. Of course, we always see the motion going left to right. 
but as you get better and you know hopefully the coaches and, and to make sure everybody's on the same page when you go into the pro shop and you say you know I want a stronger bowling ball but what you really mean is you want to see more left to right movement now the pro shop person may think completely differently than what you're actually saying so it's really important just for everybody to be on the same page and yeah we can learn it throughout the course of time just because you may not know it yet doesn't mean you can't go out there and practice and when you're when you watch your ball in leagues try and read it front to back as opposed to always looking at the side to side movement that's another great tip when you're out there practicing and you're with your coach make sure to ask questions and also when you're going in to drill a new ball make sure it's going to fit your arsenal